I now would like to talk about uh, a new technology which is not yet available in uh, America. It's not available in North America, it's not available in South America, but it's available in Europe. And uh, we have uh, made some interesting experience. And it deals about infections. And uh, if, you, if you talk about infections, they mainly occur in tibia fractures, and uh, they are incorporated by the implant itself. So the nail, the plate, maybe also the external fixator incorporates uh, the infection, and uh, with systemic antibiotics, actually infection is not being to be solved. So uh, within the anti-infective task force of uh, the AO Foundation, we looked at uh, risk factors to uh, define infections, and we did a meta-analysis and looked at age or patient factors, uh, trauma factors, and treatment-related factors. And interestingly, um, patient-related factors, it's the gender um, which makes uh, the uh, the male, male is uh, of higher risk to, in, to develop infection than female, diabetes and smoking. Trauma-related factors is uh, the lower extremity has a much higher risk of infection, uh, open fractures higher risk, and uh, again, uh, the polytrauma has a, a, a much higher risk. This is all not new to you, new to you but uh, also the type of cleaning, the postatil jet lavage, has a higher risk of infection. So, um, if you look at how does infection occur, uh, bacteria colonize the implant surface, then later on they produce a protective biofilm, uh, the biofilm formation, and uh, that makes it very difficult to be reached by anti-infective uh, therapies. So, the, in, 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 in addition, implant-related infection is uh, uh, incorporated in 27, 75% also with biofilm film formation and antibiotic therapy fails in more than uh, 20%. In addition, it's that and these uh, bacteria, they hide intracellularly you can see here on the picture intracellular uh, uh, bacteria, and they produce uh, the um, um, slimy coat, and they also might go into a small colony variant, that means sleeping bacteria, which um, um, become more vulnerable later. So, uh, in this technology, which I would like to describe, it's a coating of a uh, tibia nail. We use gentamicin. Why did we use gentamicin? Because it has been known uh, since more than 40 years. It has a high bactericidal infect, uh, effect, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's synergistics with, uh, in combination with cephalosporins. And the, uh, the coating being on the nail uh, offers a high mechanical stability, and the coating itself is released with an initial peak over the first two days. More than 50% of the coating is released, and then it's completely dissolved after four to six weeks. And before doing that in, uh, in patients, we did some preclinical testing in vivo here in a sheep model, and we looked at different concentrations of uh, inoculated bacteria which were inoculated into the, the tibial shaft. And you could see even in a very high concentration, uh, in contrast to the bare, the coated implants did not show any infection in this animal model. So this was the idea uh, and the concept of coating you have a very high, let's say, uh, local concentration of the uh, gentamicin, which is released through the implant itself, and the coating uh, dissolves after four to six weeks. 
So that was the idea to, uh, to the first coated nails, and that was actually historical because it's the first bioactive implant in trauma surgery. And just uh, a couple of years ago, 2015, uh, Benjamin Potter brought out this uh, idea and was asking, why isn't it time to coat the implant with bioactive uh, materials, which uh, technology is now available? So I'd like to show you uh, some examples. Here, a um, 17-year-old uh, male student who suffered from this uh, uh, Gusteo 3C type fracture. Um, with, uh, he had a monotrauma. And what we did first initial treatment was shortening of uh, the length. And then um, we could do a primary anastomosis of uh, the arteria, the vein, and also the nerve, the, um, the, uh, the nerve structures, which were completely uh, ruptured. And then later on, um, with the external fixator on, we changed this um, uh, shortened leg into um, um, a static interlocking nail um, uh, with full weight bearing after three months. And the patient went out fine. And then we uh, started with a gradual lengthening after three months with an ELISA fixator. We did an osteotomy here approximately. And we have a gradual lengthening. And after the lengthening of 5.5 centimeters, we did an interlocking and could re release uh, the external fixator. Here you can see the clinical examples. So the patient had, in total, a grade three type open fracture. Uh, he had a type of uh, three weeks of external fixation, and he received a secondary bone transport after this very uh, complicated situation. This is the follow-up of the patient 13 months after the injury. And here you can see him uh, 18 months after the injury uh, with a completely complete restoration of his function of uh, the tibia, and here even uh, the nerve function uh, resolves, but this is nothing which uh, is in respect to the coating itself. It is just a, a good uh, patient selection. Okay, another uh, injury, uh, a patient here, uh, he, is, uh, he has a lot of history of trauma, so he is non-compliant. He had an ISS from 46 and bilateral tibia fractures. This is uh, the right side where you have a tibia fracture. Here in this area, you see here the CT scan. And this is the left side with a very distal tibia fracture. Um, uh, grade uh, three op uh, closed um, soft tissue injury. And uh, you can see here what we did and what all of you probably would do in this situation, primary external fixation. And then after seven days, exchange to a nail, and in this case we used bilaterally coated nails because it's a very severe soft tissue injury and a polytrauma patient. You can see here the intraoperative view. The nail itself is the same uh, design as the usual uh, ETN nail which we are using here, and you can see here some intraoperative views. And this is uh, the uh, situation on uh, the side where the plate has been in, and this is uh, the, uh, the other side with the distal tibia fracture, the um, soft tissue after uh, two weeks. So this is a, 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 a unique um, film which I would like to show you, because the patient himself, he filmed his accident. He was completely drunk while this happened, and you can see here, this is a scenery in Münster, in the area where I live, uh, at two o'clock in the morning. And here his friend is coming probably, and he now is changing the line and just directly goes to him. And that's uh, the result. Bilateral tibia fractures, segmental fracture, you can see here, segmental fracture. Uh, and a uh, very proximal fracture here, a segmental fracture there. The patient is uh, very uncompliant, HIV positive, hepatitis C positive, heavy smoker. 
And uh, in this situation, we only had um, one coated nail, which we used for the right side, for the proximal tibia fracture here. And uh, you can see here, this is uh, the right leg, where we had some soft tissue problems later, but they resolved. And you can see here the right leg, uh, partial consolidation and complete consolidation and removal of uh, the implant at the contralateral side. The left leg was the more complex situation where we did not have a coated nail. And here we have the segmental fracture with an external fixator. And we performed um, uh, here an intramedullary nailing with an additional plate situation, a pretty good reduction. But then he came with a soft tissue hematoma and uh, it figured to, to be an infection after two and a half months we had to remove the, the nail, uh, we had to remove, uh, 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 and you have here pus formation, so we had to change that to an external fixator, a Lizarov fixator, and then finally he went to complete healing. Another uh, complex uh, situation here, an open uh, penile fracture, which you can see here, this is a distal tibia fracture which goes into the, the penile, area which we did an open reduction and uh, fixation of the articular joint here and then external fixation again. And this of course is a patient which is uh, at risk. He has a high uh, a risk to develop infection and we perform here intramedullary nailing and uh, after two months six months and 18 months complete healing. So this technique is also amendable for non-unions, for uh, atrophic or non-unions like you can see here, where we can exchange the non-union with a um, nailing procedure and uh, have a good and uneventful healing. One last uh, patient I would like to show you because it's a polytrauma patient and you see a lot of polytrauma here. And uh, this uh, man has a segmental complex femur fracture. He has a bilateral tibia fracture. This is the right side. This is the left side. And this is again the right side you can see here. And we first perform um, um, the nailing procedure in the femur. With, a, uh, uh, with an LFN nail type, with an uh, antigrad uh, interlocking of the proximal uh, femur and distal interlocking, and he also had a Hoffer type fracture in the distal femur. This is the post-operative view. And the contralateral side first, again, external fixation first in this polytrauma patient, and then later exchange to uh, intramedullary nailing and uh, here in this case because of the very proximal tibia fracture he also had a tibia plateau fracture uh, which you can see here which was uh, addressed with the screw fixation we perform in rare cases a supra, uh, um, supra patella um, uh, nailing technique uh, you can see here this is uh, the quadriceps uh, tendon which is opened the nail is uh, inserted on this way, and you also can use a coated nail for this type of procedure in this uh, patient, you can see here. And the nail is now inserted um, and uh, went in. The, the problem is intraoperatively, you have to really figure out the correct length because this nail is not so cheap. Um, and here you can see this is uh, the right side and uh, the left side with a good situation. So uh, to, to conclude, uh, how long did it take to develop this technology from bench to bedside? And to be honest, it's more than 20 years ago that this patent has been uh, uh, released uh, and until the, the ETN nail was available, it was uh, uh, almost uh, uh, 14 years later. So this idea of uh, coating nail is now becoming reality and uh, I would like to conclude that these uh, nails they can be used in all standard indication as methods and uh, 
they com compensate uh, limitation of systemic antibiotic nail, but, uh, antibiotics, but you have a very high uh, uh, local concentration, but you should not change the systemic uh, regimen. It, uh, we use it in patients at risk, so polytrauma patients, uh, immune compromised patients, and patients who have a severe soft tissue injury, and so far we have seen no side effects uh, whatsoever. Thank you very much.